In this video, we'll be learning about setting properties. We will be setting our object's properties in the viewDidLoad method inside of mbfViewController.m. This will make our dog object unique. As we recall, we had a few properties that were located in our MBF dog class header file. We can take a quick look at these properties by clicking on mbfdog.h, and we see that we currently have three properties that we've already defined for our dog. I'm going to go ahead and add one additional property so that we can see even after we've created our dog object, we can still add on to the MBF dog header file and add additional properties or attributes for our dog object. So I'm going to add a name so that we can call our dog by a name. And this will be an NS string object or a set of characters to hold the dog's name. So let's try to remember our syntax from earlier. We're going to write app property and we're going to use a few options that we haven't discussed yet. So we're going to use strong and non-atomic. And we said the type was going to be an NS string. And since this is an object before our variable name, we need to use a care star or asterisk. And we can add name with a semicolon at the end since this ends our statement. Let's now return to the MBF dog viewcontroller.m file so we can start setting up some properties. We can now change or set our dog's name using my dog, which is our variable name for our dog object. It's the way we represent, uh, access our dog object. And using the dot notation that we've seen with labels and text fields, we can use dot name and we can set it equal to a string. And we've learned earlier that strings are created using at quote, and we can add some sort of set of characters in here. So I'm gonna call my dog Nana, and I can add a semicolon at the end. Notice that we use our variable name for the object we created in the line above. And once we can properly reference the object, we can set its name property with a value that's of type string. So we access the dot name, which is of type NS string. We just set that in the header file for MBF dog. And I created a string using at quote and gave it a name Nana. We now, have our, we now have made our dog object more unique. When you first create a dog, it's good to think of it as a large gray amorphous blob. And it's technically not even gray because I haven't even set a color for it yet, but just like a large amorphous blob that represents a dog. However, the more we know about it, the more we can set its properties and define what this dog should be, look like, as well as its name and, and breed for all the properties that we've created inside of our header file. So now our dog is a little bit more specific. It has a name, but let's set its breed. So we're going to type my dog, again using the variable name, and we're going to access the property breed. And Nana sounds like it should be a St. Bernard. So I'm going to set it equal to at quote, and we'll type St. Bernard in. It's going to be a big dog. Next, we can set the dog's age to one year. I think that that's still considered a puppy. I'm pretty sure. So we can do my dog dot age, and we can see here that age, actually let me go back, when I start typing age in, we see that it says int age, which means that its value that it needs to be set equal to has to be an integer as well. I couldn't set it equal to a string. If, for example, I tried to type one in like this, I would get an error. And the warning it says is incompatible pointer to int integer conversion assigned to int from ns string. So basically I'm trying to assign an ns string value, but it expects an integer. So let's give it an integer instead. We know that we can just write one and a semicolon at the end. And now my dog's age is equal to one. Before we set the image, image let's show or prove that the properties are actually set. So I can write an ns log statement to print out all of my objects uh, attributes that I've just set up for it. So I'm going to write at quote, my dog is named, and I'm going to use percent at sign. Percent at sign is a token that expects an object. So we'll see how that works in just a second. Next, we're going to check its age. So we can say, and its age is percent i, which again gets replaced with an integer value. We know that my dog that age returns an integer value. And finally, we can say that the breed is, and we can do percent at, 
and we can do quote. And notice I intentionally did the age and the breed, not in this order, in terms of I can pass these arguments in um, any way I would like. It's not required to do these in order. As long as I've set these values, the object knows its pr property or attributes. So I can use comma, I can say my dog dot name, comma, my dog, and I need to give it its age now. And finally, I'm going to say my dog dot breed. And I can go ahead and run this uh, application. And I should see these different attributes print out with the filler text inside of my NSLog statement come out to my console. So let me open up the console at the bottom here. And one second, it's loading up right now. And there it goes. So we see that my dog's name is Nana, what I set up earlier, and its age is one, and its breed is St. Bernard. Now, you might be saying, well, when I created the object, was I able, what, what were the initial values that were set up? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this NSLog statement, and I'm gonna add it right below the my dog. You don't have to do this, I'm just proving that um, by setting these properties, we're changing the values. So I go ahead and rerun my application, and we notice that it should run much faster this time because Xcode has pre-compiled some headers for us. I can go ahead and make my console a little bit bigger here, and I'm gonna open, drag this up a little bit, and we'll see that my dog is named null, which stands for nothing. It literally points to zero, and we see, and its age is zero, and the breed is null. So before I set these properties, my dog does not, is not, does not have these attributes set up. But after I've set them up, I can access these properties for my dog. Luckily, the percent at sign for us is used for all objects. So we used it for, for both of our NS strings here. And this will be really handy going forward because you're not going to need to memorize uh, that many more um, or remember that many more tokens going forward. Now the dog is starting to take form. Of course, we could make many more dogs, all from our class, and set their attributes as well. This is the beauty of object-oriented programming. You can write one generic class and create as many specific objects from it as you'd like within reason. There are limitations in terms of memory, but if we had an infinite number of places to put all these objects, we could create as many objects from this class as we would like. And each object would have its own set of attributes that we could set for it. Okay, now what if we wanted to get rid of our dog? For example, he was adopted by another family so sad I know. Well, we could use a concept called nil. By setting our variable equal to nil, so my dog is the variable name, we can set it equal to nil. Notice that it's lowercase here and I'm adding a semicolon and notice nil is a keyword, it's highlighted in pink. When we rewrite our log statement, we're gonna see that this dog and all of its properties do not exist. So we can go ahead and add another NSLog statement. I'm gonna remove the one from before just to try to keep this a little bit cleaner. So we should only have two log statements to print out, one with all of the properties of the dog and one without all of the properties because we set the my dog variable equal to nil. So let's go ahead and rerun our application. And we see that my dog is named null and its age is zero and its breed is null, just like the NSLog statement we had right before we set up our properties. This is the basics of creating and deleting an object. It's slightly more complex than this as the storage of objects is pretty unique, 